Welcome back. This is Dan Habe with CF Ninja Hacks, and today we are going to talk about the exciting topic of email integration, specifically setting up your SMTP inside of ClickFunnels. Now, at this point here, you might say to yourself, I don't need SMTP, but you might. So at least watch the first five, 10 minutes of this video just to see whether you need it or not and the very simple way it can be set up if you decide you want to use it. But if you're on the $97 plan, you don't have to set this up. On the $297 plan, if you're using the follow-up funnels, which used to be known as Actionetics, if you want to use them, then you definitely have to set up the SMTP. So what SMTP is, it stands for a simple mail transfer protocol, which basically means it's a computer program that is essentially the mailman. So when you generate an email inside of ClickFunnels, whether it's like in the automation tab, whether it's in the products, or if it's coming out of a follow-up funnel or a broadcast or anything like that, when you generate an email in there, it is then picked up by the SMTP, which in our case here, we're going to use SendGrid. So it's picked up by the SMTP and then it is sent to the recipient. So it's like the middle person there in the middle, picking up the mail out of your mailbox and then delivering it to the recipient. So what are some cases where you would use the SMTP or want to set up the SMTP if you're on the $97 plan. Well, let's go into a funnel real quick and we want to go to one in particular here with a product in it because you wouldn't need one with a product. It could be an opt-in page. It could be any number of things, but you want to come up here to the automation tab because there's a couple of different things you can do. You can set an action. So let's just click on set an action first. And you would give your action a name. You could give it a condition here as well. So it'd be everyone who came to this page, everyone who came to this page, saw the page, but didn't purchase. And then everyone that purchased. And based upon these three conditions, you can add them to a list. You can remove them from a list. You can send yourself an email, you can add a tag, or you can remove a tag. So the first two, add to a list and remove from a list, that would only work for somebody on the 297 plan. The other three could be somebody on the $97 plan. And then if you're adding them to a list, you would click on this and put in the list right there. But the other thing, and why you would need your SMTP set up properly, is we can add a new email. So even on the $97 plan, you can come in here and you can send somebody an email based upon those same conditions we had before. So everybody who landed on this page could get an email, or if they purchased or didn't purchase, they could get an email as well. And now down here in the bottom, you can see you got a bunch of templates. Now this would only show for somebody on the 297 plan. If you're on the $97 plan, you're going to have an editor pop up right down here where you can create the email. And I will show you that same editor because it's the same one that's in the products tab in a minute. So you can set up a delay on it. You can put in your subject line, pick out your SMTP right here and the whole thing. So there's one case where you might want to... Um, set up the SMTP if you're on the $97 plan so that if somebody even like opts, opts into your page or they sign up for a webinar or they do anything else, it can automatically trigger an email out of here to be sent to them. So let's close this and then let's go into our products. And we'll just edit one of our products here because we're not talking about setting up the products today. And we're going to come over here to our fulfillment email. And we can say here we want to enable a fulfillment email. So when somebody purchases the product, you can automatically fire off an email to them. So here's the editor that you would have seen on the other page as well if you're on the $97 plan. So you put in your subject line, your body, and then down here, you can, if you choose to, you can take this code right here, you can copy it, you can put it anywhere inside of this page. And if you do that, whatever you choose down here in this drop down for your different pages, thank you page or membership page, you can pick one down here and you can say, okay, well, I want them to go to this page right here, this thank you page right here. I want them to go there. Um, as soon as they get this email, so they get the email, they click on what will become a link here. 
and then they will go off to that thank you page. So you can put that right in here. And then just to follow up with one other thing here, you also have your follow-up actions. Just like I showed you, you can set an action in in the, uh, in the tab there, in the automation tab, you can do the same thing here. So as soon as somebody signs up, let's say you're, you got your um, integration with MailChimp, you can come in here and you can add or remove them from a list in MailChimp or inside of ClickFunnels. Again, you can add them to a list, remove them, send an email notification, add a tag, remove a tag, or even unsubscribe the contact. Right there, that's it. If you're on the $97 plan, those two places, you can automatically send out an email. Of course, you can do it on the 297 plan too. But on the, one, on the $97 plan, you can automatically send out emails upon a purchase or if somebody opts in or buys a product or even lands on a product page. So now let's go back in here and I'll show you how to set this up first if you're on the $97 plan. And then I will go into the 297 plan. So here... All you have to do is transactional only. It's a very quick setup, whereas transactional and marketing is much more uh, complex and intense. So if you're on the $97 plan, there's really no reason to set up the other. So I'm just going to put in here a title of test. I'm going to put in my name of Dan. I'm just going to do this here real quickly. Put in an email address. We're going to pick a domain name. We make sure we set our country code. So we will scroll down here and find the United States. Oh, Vietnam sounds like a good enough country for today. And then we will save our SMTP integration. And you should really put in an SMTP footer. And I will pull that up here in a second. And what you're going to do is you're going to get to this page right here. And it's going to refresh itself a number of times. And then eventually we should come up with a result. And while that's pulling up, I went into ClickFunnels help docs and I came down here to the SMTP footer. And so here's the code that they recommend you put in there. And let me just copy it out and then we will go back into the editor once it's done. And I'll just drop it in there so you can take a look at what it looks like. All right, so then, like I said, it reloaded a few times and now it says, congratulations, view your mail configurations. So let's just click on the three dots here and go back into our settings. And we'll scroll all the way down to the bottom and we will paste in that SMTP footer that they suggest. Now I have one that's a lot more complex than this, but this is good enough. And the most important part here is this unsub part here. So the AHREF equals the unsub. You want to make sure you have that in there though, so that does create the unsubscribe link. So anybody who gets this email can simply click on the bottom and unsubscribe. So we will save that once again. So now if you're on the $97 plan, you're pretty much done. You can stop watching at this point because next we're going to go through and show how to set it up if you're on the 297 plan. So for the 297 plan, we're going to use SendGrid. So they've made a number of changes just recently in SendGrid where they're making people use what they call their API. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go first off into SendGrid and start there. So we're going to come over here and start for free. Obviously, if you have an existing account, you could just go into your account. You may already have the API set up because they've been pushing everybody towards that over the last month or so. So I'm just gonna put in an email address here and give it a password. And that password must have at least 16 characters in it. And we will check all the boxes and we will create a new account. And then we need to fill out all this information. So I'll pause and do that real quickly. And click on get started. And this should pop up the first time you come in here. And what we want to do is click on this right here, create a single sender. And we'll put in all of our information again and click on create. But now that we have this set up, we're going to go back into ClickFunnels. Now, along the way here somewhere, probably the next time I log back in, they're going to ask me to set up two-factor authentication for logging in. Make sure you do that. And my suggestion would be to use Authy if you do it. It's, a, it's an app you can have on your phone. And what, the, what you do is once... Once you go to do your two-step uh, two authentication, you just go to the app, you go to where it will say send grid on there, and you type in the six-digit number you see on your phone, and it works really slick. So let me go back into ClickFunnels here, and we are now going to add an email integration. 
and we're going to put in our transactional and marketing. And again here, we're just going to do this as a, we're gonna call this test demo. We're gonna put in my from name and my from email. And now here we're gonna put in our SMTP server, SMTP port, and our little bit more information. So where we're gonna get that from is again, we can go back into ClickFunnels and all that information should be in here somewhere. Here we go. So our, our server is this. We'll just copy that out. Oops, wrong page. So we'll put that in there. So smtp.sendgrid.net. The port is 587. And then the SMTP domain, domain should be right here, sendgrid.net. So again, up here at smtp.sendgrid.net, down here it is just sendgrid.net. This is 587. And now because of a recent change made to SendGrid, when you come in here the next time, it may not say SMTP user here. This may not even show at all. And this over here may say put in your API key or something like that because that's what we have to put in here. And the fix for right now is it even says it here in the instructions. It says you want to put in the word API key, all one word, all lowercase. And we want to put that in instead of the username. So we're going to put that in there. And then we're going to go back into SendGrid and we have to find in there where our API key is. And now here it tells us in the instructions, as it tells us here, enter your API key from SendGrid generated in step six in the previous process. Okay, well, we'll just go into here. We're going to come down to API keys right here under settings, down here to API keys. And we're going to say we want to create a new API key. And we will give this a name, so I'm just going to call it test key. And then we want full access, and let's create and view. And so here is the API key, and we're just going to click on it. It says up here that it is copied, and now we will click on done. And it says you should keep this in a safe place, even though I'm pretty sure at any time you can come in and generate a new API key if you need to. And this over here is not your actual API key. This is right there. But like I said, I'm not sure if you can copy it again, so you have to create a new one if need be. So over here, where it currently says password and might say API key in the future, we will paste in that ginormously long API key. And we're gonna keep going down the page. So the next thing we need to do is just put in a domain. Again, this is a test for you. You would put in obviously a good domain address, everything for yourself, and then we'll come down here and we will say we are in the United States, if I can find it right there. And then again, if you wanted to put in their footer, you can come in here, grab a hold of it. Now there are multiple pages inside of the help docs that have this information, but just uh, all I did to find it is I Googled uh, ClickFunnels help SMTP, and I found that page. So here we are, we should be set to go. Everything should be filled in. And so now we are going to say, save our SMTP integration. But before we do that, you're gonna see up here, when we originally came in, there were multiple things here on the right-hand side. Now there's only one left, there's only one webhook left. And so what we can do is we can click on this link and we can copy that because we're gonna need that in a minute. But either way, let's just save the SMTP integration. Let's make sure it is working properly. And the problem was not actually my email address here. The problem was, I must have missed it along the way, is that they sent me out an email from SendGrid to that email address I put in there as my from address. And so now I need to verify my single sender. That was a problem. I did not verify it by clicking on that email. So now we should be completely verified. And we can return to single sender verification. And we had seen this screen before, and now it says over here verified. I guess before there was an X. But again, I don't know as though it said anywhere on here that I was going to receive an email. But so it has to say verified and have the little check mark there. So now let's go back into ClickFunnels. Let's scroll down to the bottom. And again, if you want to make this default, you would click on that for default. And we will save our SMTP integration. 
And there you go. Now we have it working just fine. Let me see here. It says test demo is disabled. Let me see successfully created. Why is this disabled? Let's click on it here real quick. Let's go to our settings. And warning, your SMTP integration is not currently available due to previous sending issues with your SMTP provider. Please re-verify your settings and save changes once complete. Okay, let's just go here. Everything should be fine. We will save this again. And we're still having an issue right there. Okay, what I did is I went in and I came over here, I clicked on the three dots and I removed this and then I went in and I set it up again. I think what happened is because I had not verified it by clicking on that email ahead of time, therefore it, it did not take it properly. So got it all set up now. So what I had to do was just go back in, delete it out and put all the information back in again. So just make sure when you set this up the first time that you find that email, click on it, and make sure you have verified your sender before you go any further. So now the next thing we need to do is we need to actually go back into this one here. So let's go here and we're going to click on our settings because what we need is we need to grab that webhook that we need to then put inside of SendGrid. So we'll just come over here. We will copy that webhook. We will come into SendGrid and we're going to come over here to the left hand side and we're going to come down to mail settings and we're going to click on event webhook and authorization method is none http post url this is where we want to put in that webhook so we will put that right there we can test our integration once we are done and then here pretty much you can click on select all and then like take out these two i forget what they really say to do it's like bounce delivered clicked and unsubscribed i think but in this case here you can click them all and just take off these two down here we can turn this on to enabled we can click on save and then if we want to we can come back into it here and we can say we're going to test our integration and a sample event notification will be sent to your endpoint shortly which i don't think it even it creates an email or not i don't think it does send you anything but while we're here, let's also go in here. I said earlier, you're going to need to do a two-factor authentication. So let's set that up right away because it's going to make you do it at some point here very soon. So add two-factor authentication by enabling this, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I got it. And here, like I said, you want to tell it you want it to use the Authy app. And then we're going to click here on next and you put in your country code, you put in your cell phone number. So I will put that in real quick, click on next, and then it will send you a code on your phone. So let me look at where that code is. And because I already have Authy on my phone, I don't think it's going to send me a message, but I will show you what Authy looks like. So you got to go into the web store, you got to find the application, and then for uh, SendGrid particularly, this is what it's going to look like. And so you can see on here, I, there's like four or five different buttons down here for different applications. And so I have SendGrid clicked, and then it gives you like a six or eight digit number up here that when it asks for that, you just type it in and it refreshes itself like every 30 seconds. So we will turn that off. And now we're just going to click cancel here because you get the idea on how to set that up. And now we have one last step to do, which is to come over here to sender authentication. We're going to click on that. And all of this is being done just to ensure to the highest degree possible that all of your emails are going to get to your recipients. So what we want to do here is we want to come in here with sender authentication, sender identity, all this stuff here. But we already have the sender set up over here. So what we want to do is we want to authenticate our domain. So we're going to click on here for get started. And then we got our DNS host. We're going to come down here. We are now hosting it at Cloudflare, even though your registrar, maybe somebody else is currently being hosted at Cloudflare. And would you like to brand the links for this domain? We're going to click on yes there as well. And now let's click on next. 
So here we want to have this connected to the side. We're going to call this funnel code secrets. That may not be the exact same, uh, same domain I had typed in already, but again, I'm going to delete this account so that doesn't have to be perfect. So you want to make sure all along, you know, which domain you're actually going to want your emails going through. So here we're going to use a domain of funnel code secrets and the reason why we're doing this is the domain I had put in earlier as I was just running through this very quickly, I don't have that actual uh, domain that we could be working on. So we don't need to do anything on the advanced settings. So we're going to click on next. And then we're going to get a bunch of DNS records like we had before. If you went through the training on how to set up your, your domain, and if you didn't, you need to go back and do that because you want to set up your domain and have it run through Cloudflare. Well, that's exactly what I did here is I have this domain set up through Cloudflare. So we're going to come in here. We're going to look at our DNS records. I'm going to click the third box over here. Go to our DNS records because we need to take some of the records that we're looking at on this page and put them over here into Cloudflare. So the first thing we need to do is you're going to see here it says funnelcodesecrets.com. Let me get that right there. So funnelcodesecrets.com, that is our domain. And this URL 1684 is essentially a subdomain. So we want to just copy off that first bit before the period and go into Cloudflare. And here we want to add a new record. And it says over here that all these are going to be CNAME records. So we're going to create a new CNAME record. We're going to come down, put that in there, paste in the URL 6A4, whatever. And then we're going to come back to SendGrid. And on the right-hand side, you can copy the whole thing. On the left-hand side, we're going to strip off the first bit. On the right-hand side, you can copy the whole thing. So we'll come over here and we will paste that in and we will click on save. And we're gonna go back and forth and do this again with every single one of these. We're gonna copy that off, create another CNAME record, paste it in, go back to SendGrid, copy the second one, which was the same as the first one. And we're going to click on save this. And then again, Add a new C name. Back to send grid, copy. And all I'm doing every time is just clicking on save and leaving the proxy turned on. And we'll see how it works at the end because there used to be a glitch in how this worked. And I think that's been cleaned up here. So, so here it is. We got this error code down here at the bottom. This kind of record cannot be proxied. Okay, so we're going to have to turn that one off and we're going to click on save. So expect to see that error come up at the bottom on a couple of these. So we were back here. We're going to do another CNAME record and we're going to paste that in. And then we're going to grab the last one or second of the last one. Put that in there. Now let's click on save. I think we're going to get the same error message. Yep. So let's turn off that proxy and we'll save that. And then the one last one here, copy, add a new CNAME record. And then we will copy the last bit there. Put it in. We should get the same error message. Yep. So we'll turn that proxy off and we will click on save. Now let's see what's going to happen here. Let's see if this does it right. We have added these records and now we will click on verify. And we got two of them that had errors. And uh, I thought they had uh, changed this, but um, I guess not. So what we need to do is the same thing with those first two we put in as we did with the others is we need to turn off the proxy part. But now I clicked on verify and now we have that same problem back again. So let's go back into our DNS and let's turn both of those proxies back off. Like I said, the last time I did this, they needed to be turned off. So 
if I'm not able to 100% get this done right, just know that going forward that they should be turned off. So now let me go back into SendGrid. Let me click on Verify. And I'm still having an issue with one of these. This is really interesting because what it's doing is it's appending this period to the end there. So I don't know if that's a function of is not liking my domain, if there's something messed up in it, if there is something messed up inside of SendGrid. So now again, with both of these DNS or both of the proxies being turned off, now it's saying that it's working again. But let's come down here. As we know, we can click on this and we can click on verify and see again we're having the same issue. So what I would say is come in, set it up just exactly like this. Turn off the proxy on all five of these here and then run through a bunch of test emails. And if that doesn't work, um, it should work because this is the way it's supposed to be set up. But if it doesn't work, then get a hold of SendGrid and ask them uh, what the heck is going on in there. So that's all I have for today. If you have any questions, just let me know.